Hi and welcome back to the Academy of Historical Fencing. I'm Nick Thomas and bringing you a first look at a very exciting new product for the HEMA world and that is the Black Fencer Steel Broadsword. So just to, to start off with, I have no financial connection with Black Fencer but as ever I do provide them advice, recommendations and specifications so that we can get the best products that we possibly can. So I've, I've paid for this sword, this is not a freebie, so I'm going to give you an, a, a relatively in-depth and honest review for it. I've not actually sparred with it yet because it only just arrived. In fact, we just had our first return to uh, sort of post-lockdown training sessions on uh, Monday just gone, and I drilled with this for the first hour of, of the session, so I've handled it a lot and done a lot of um, cutting drills and that kind of thing with it, so I know how it handles, I just haven't put it into sparring usage yet. So. I will use it a lot more and come back with a full and thorough review once that's been done. But I know people are keen to just see it and and get my first impressions to begin with already. So uh, a bit of an overview, Black Fencer, obviously they started off making synthetic training swords and uh, over the years they've started making steel ones and that started off with things like long swords and, and evolved onto especially the sabres that we use a lot of. In fact, they're some of the best sabres on the market if you want to practice uh, Napoleonic British stuff, for example. So they, they have a whole range of really excellent synthetic and steel products. And so the, the basket hilt is a training sword that is really badly catered for on the market. Uh, and it, well, atrociously catered for, I would say, is that you've got a few options if you live in the US, like uh, Darkwood and, and Castile. But if you live in, UK, in the UK or Europe, realistically, you've got armor class in Scotland and not really a lot else. I mean, of course, you can go to Smith's that you can pay custom for and pay a real fortune, although the results won't always be perfect and you will pay a lot of money for them. But for me, I'm most interested with a product like this to get something that is relatively off the shelf and affordable for our students, our viewers and everything, everyone else. So that is why this is a quite an exciting product. So as ever with Black Fencer, they are quite affordable. Now it's more complex than some of the hilts, so it's gonna be a bit more expensive than some. I believe they're working currently on around about 370 euros is the plan for this as a complete sword, which I think is pretty reasonable. Um, so what was the plan with this? Because I had some inputs, especially into the blade and to some degree the hilt as well. So the hilt is, is the, the, what they call their regimental basket. So you can get a synthetic version that's been available for a while. So it's based on that, although the, these loops here are quite different and as is the pommel, the overall construction is slightly different and the grip of course. So it's kind of based on their regimental, which means the basket itself is, is kind of just a very typical 18th century basket ranging into the start of the 19th century. Just a really, really iconic, typical basket hilt Scottish in form, um, just because of a few fine, fine sort of details, but in terms of function, this would be uh, you know, the standard sort of basket hilt, both for you know the whole of the UK, because these basket hilts were used throughout the uh, throughout the UK, especially for cavalry use. But um, but anyway, so yeah, Scottish style hilt, mostly based on their regimental basket for their synthetic, but with these very different loops, and we're going to go onto that a little bit later. Um, but the blade is the one I had more input into because um, I wanted a blade with this that represented a fairly robust broadsword. So the weight of this sword is 1.39 kilograms and um, I, I d asked for them to aim for 1.3 and they did actually hit that until they had to add on these loops here and that pushed it up another 50 grams almost. So it came up 1350. Is that heavy for a broadsword? Absolutely no. So some people will assume that that's a heavy sword uh, for, for this kind of sword. It, it absolutely isn't. It's, it's mainly because people have got used to using things like the uh, Castile Economy basket hilt, which in its own right is a very good training sword, but it does represent the very light end of the spectrum for, you know, quite long basket hilted swords. And, uh, and similar goes for the armor class feather style blades. Uh, so, yeah, basket hilts of a, of a good long length, around about one kilo is the light end of the spectrum, which is where the Castile is. The armor class comes out a little bit more with the Feather Star Blades, around about uh, 1.2, I believe. And this, which as you can see, is not a Feather or narrow blade. This is a broad broadsword, 1.39 kilos. Um, I could show you museum examples if you just go to the Royal Armouries and put in basket hilts into their online collection or go to the uh, New York Met. Look into a lot of books that have stats on these and you will find that a 
a long and broad bladed broadsword is, is typically in the sort of 1.3 to 1.4 kilo range and you'll even find them in the 1.5 to 1.6 although that is a bit beastly so the plan was to go for a decently broad large broadsword typical of its form and not the lighter forms because there are some shorter thinner especially some of the back sword although not always um, examples can be lighter some of the regimental types that were produced in england were around about one kilo so my feeling was that those lighter forms were already well represented by the castile economy in terms of blade because you can put it on any hilt you want and the armor class feather types especially the new one developed by um, j mass called now the manitoba blade which I think both of those two blades, they represent lightweight basket hilted swords very nicely. But I wanted with therefore Black Fencer to give us the broader, beefier option, which at the moment is really only catered for by Castile, um, which we don't really see much over this side because they're expensive in the US and then we pay a lot of import fees, so nobody really buys them here. And, and to some degree Darkwood as well, uh, although that, that some of the similar problems. So yeah, 370 euros for a complete basket hilt that is a full weight, meaty broadsword, I think is, is really quite nice. The plan with this blade, I wanted them to go for a wide fuller, um, a bit like their, um, their sabers that we use. And that is, in, it was in part to, to, to give a certain look, but also to give us a very wide blade. I absolutely did not want this looking like a narrow bladed sword, which again, those are catered for by Castile and Armour Class. I wanted it to be a nice broad example. Now, this means um, the way they've done it, the edges are a good thickness for that, but they're not sort of, you know, feather thick. So I anticipate a little bit more edge damage than, than say, um, a feather type, like a Castile or, a, or Armour Class. In that regard, it'll be a bit like the sabers that we use from, from Black Fencer. For me, I love the Black Fencer Sabres because, yes, they take a little bit more edge damage than, let's say, a Kaviton Eastern because with that dumbbell section, the edges are so thick on it that, yes, they're super durable edges, but with the Black Fencer, you get something that it handles so close to the actual real originals, and so there's a trade-off depending on what you want out of your sword. For me, a lot of the Black Fencers, you're getting something that just feels genuinely like a sharp sword. Uh, but yes, you might take a little bit of extra edge damage with that. I will test that and get back to you on that, see how it goes. It's still a fairly thick edge. I'm fairly confident it's going to be pretty decent. The flexibility is nice. As you can see here, it's mostly just in, in, in the tip of the blade. It's a good amount of flex, more than a lot have actually. Say a lot more than a, uh, let's say a Castile broadsword. There's a lot more flex than that. Uh, it's not far off the uh, Black Fencer Sabres, so it's a nice amount of flex. The tip is spatulated, although as with uh, most black fences, the tip, despite being spatulated, is still quite thin. And for the sabers, I think we get away with that because the blade's a bit broader at the tip and the curved blades tend to uh, encourage flexibility when they land on the thrust, whereas a straight blade tends to hit a bit more truer and then tends to uh, be a bit, bit nastier on the, on the thrust as far as our sparring partners goes, I would say. And so I have put a rubber tip over it. This is one of the um, uh, black fence of rubber tips that they use for all kinds of things. The blade length is 85 centimeters, which is uh, a whisker shy of 34 inches. Really traditional and typical length for this kind of sword. The balance point is eight centimeters, which is, is close to the hand without being you know, all in the hand. Um, basket hilted swords, they tend to balance a bit closer to the hand than let's say a lot of sabers, um, particularly sabers of the, uh, the late 18th century. And that's simply because they have a fair bit of mass here as well as the fact that the blades don't always carry so much mass in the tip as some sabers of that period. And so eight centimeters is very authentic. You could see balance points with these kind of swords anywhere down to about five centimeters and ranging up to about even 15 for a very heavy broadsworded example. So this is kind of typical and it's a robust meaty sword, but as you can imagine with not too much mass there and an eight centimeter balance, it doesn't feel cumbersome. What else can I say about this? Well, the, um, the grip is their latest new form of uh, ribbed uh, rubber type, which is a bit like I've, well, it's exactly like I've got on the latest 1803s and stuff like that. This is much nicer than what they were using before which was um, which was still rubber, but it was a smooth grip. I find this a lot better. It's not a completely round grip. It's slightly wider um, 
in terms of this way than, than this way as it should be. So it feels quite nice. It's um, a bit larger than the originals in terms of the overall basket, the overall grip, and that's the general tendency for all reproduction basket hilts, to be honest. It's very rare you get a basket hilt today that is as small as most originals were. Again, though, what are you comparing to? Because there's a huge scope of antiques out there to compare to. But generally speaking, most replicas are larger, and um, that's partly to do with the way they've made manufactured and partly to do with getting uh, glove space because ultimately that provides loads of protection except for this section here and the wrist so the base of the thumb and the wrist and people use different methods to to fix that they use various cuffed gloves demi gauntlets all kinds of things but ultimately you generally need something ideally you don't have to i've usually just worn a leather glove but there are vulnerabilities here definitely so generally speaking people like a little bit of room and as well of course there's different hand sizes so i have really medium sized hands and there are people in our club and, and elsewhere that have large and extra large hands and these swords have to be manufactured for everyone uh, because they are they're not a custom piece as such uh, and also on that note a lot of period basket hilts had slightly more room on the right side than the left side and that's because you don't need so much room for the thumb as you did for the back of the hand and that's not really repeatable for most basket hilts today because they're, they're again they're universally made for everyone and people want to use them in the left hand and so understandably they're usually made symmetrical and that doesn't just go for black fencer that goes for armor class and castile they do they all do the same in that now the basket is slightly oversized compared to some other examples again they, they vary i'm talking now about reproductions so here is an armor class fitted with a different blade and therefore different nut at the moment this is on a Kavitan blade but uh, armor class in scotland have been making basket hilts for well as long as i've been buying swords since the mid 90s uh, and, and clearly a bit before that and they make amazing baskets but their blades have been a bit rubbish for our purposes. They've made good kind of theatrical blades, what they call their pseudo sharps, which we've had some of, and they make good reenactment blades, which we've also had some of, which don't handle particularly great and don't really flex very well. And they're suitable for the reenactment market and not great for us. But anyway, they make great basket hilts and they have clearly made strides recently to put more these feather style, more hemo oriented blades on. And in fact, I have two of the latest um, Manitoba style blades that Jay worked on come in for the two baskets that I have from Armour Class. So they will hopefully be going on in the next few weeks and I'll be reviewing those as well. And I think they're going to be a great option for representing the light end of the spectrum. Now, as you can see on these baskets is in profile, there's not a massive difference between the two. But if we, we look to the actual width of the basket, if you like, the black fencer is a good bit uh, wider, a bit more open space. And it also the grip is just that little bit longer. Now, this uh, is the first one, first steel that Black Fencer has ever made. And despite the fact that I, I did buy it from them, it was also on the basis that I would give feedback, give my opinion, so that they could make it a production model. So I will give my feedback and recommendations to try and make this a better sword still. And I think a part of that will be to try and just reduce this width just a bit because the armor class is just that little bit smaller it's, it's still a little bit larger than most originals but it's large enough you can fit a, a good glove in or, um, or roughly anyway we don't want to go too small because we don't want to compromise it for all users but i think we can lose just a little bit of width and i think by doing that we can probably get that weight down to the original target 1300 grams which for a decent broad broadsword is about optimum i would say and when I say optimum, I don't mean for winning a fight or winning a tournament or anything like that. I mean compared to original examples. And, uh, and that's what I want it to be. And so uh, I'm going to really put this to the test a lot in the coming weeks. And I think it's going to be a great sword as is. But I think just a few little tweaks will make it just a tad bitter again. But they're, they're, they're quite minor. Now, when they finished this sword, it didn't have front loops. So on the synthetic version, the way it works is because these, these baskets are cut in one place a piece. I don't know if they use laser plasma water jet, I don't know. But it's, they cut, you know, cut it in one, one sheet and then bend it into shape. And the way it worked is the loops were in this section here and they just, they just bend them out, which works okay, especially for you know, a, a cheap synthetic training sword. But in the steel version, they weren't in there. Although I'm really pleased to say 
that they have this reinforcement connecting bar here. So front loops on broadswords, which people argue endlessly why they're there. They, people talk about them being for trapping and catching and all kinds of things and strength. Personally, I think the only reason that they're there is to work as a buffer to, for protection before you actually get to the rest of the basket because that's where you're taking the hardest impacts all the time in the fight and I think that's it's, it's, it's just basically an additional level of protection and when they bend, buckle and get damaged your thumb becomes exposed and I've lost a thumbnail doing that using my darkwood basket because it's just completely open but you'll notice that if these loops got broken or, or removed completely this reinforcement bar here not only provides massive structural protection but it also has just actual coverage of where the thumb area is. So I'm really pleased to see that. And because you've got this plate section here, uh, that also, of course, does provide additional top protection to where my thumb is. So I think that's nicely done. Although another recommendation I think I will give to them is this big flat plate here, I think it could be made slightly prettier. So the way we've got, uh, you know, nice sort of hearts and, and, and holes here, I think we could do something here, nice heart shape here, just to give a little bit of flavor, a little bit of character. It's completely unnecessary, although, you know, it'll all shed a few grams here and there. So I think that might be my recommendation just to make the top a little bit prettier, but I'm really pleased to, to see that it's actually got a lot of protection there, especially if there are any problems with these loops, which I'll now get onto. So these front loops, uh, I sent them a lot of pictures of museum examples and they copied the structure, the way that it uh, moves from this bar here and then joins up onto the front quillen section here. So that's based on original examples in terms of size and shape. Again, bear in mind there are various examples out there. And this is a major weak point of so many basket hilts. My armor class ones are battered to hell. My darkwood one uh, has been welded three or four times and, and bashed down. And yes, I've lost a thumbnail. The darkwood ones are especially weak. Uh, but most basket hilts have weak rings here and I asked them to make them especially strong in terms of the thickness of the steel and where they join up and they've definitely done that. They're some of the toughest that I've seen and then as I said there's protection under it so it's less of a problem anyway so I'm really pleased to see that. I actually feel like I'm not at risk of losing another thumbnail from that so that's good. Uh, the pommel is nice and small, so basket hilts, they tended to have either small pommels or hollow pommels. So particularly in the early 17th century, a lot of them were two-part braised hollow examples. The the, um, the early 17th century backsword that I sometimes show, the antique, that is a two-part domed braised kind of affair, just like uh, Darkwood Armoury used for their, their um, equivalent training swords. This is a small solid as far as I can tell, and I think it's pretty good. Uh, it, it, it's about in scale to a lot of antiques. Maybe it could be a fraction smaller, but I don't think it's necessarily needed, particularly if they, they lost a little bit of width and cut out some holes and bits. I think it, it's, it's just about right as is, particularly balancing a, a fairly sturdy blade. And so I've talked about the, the weights, the balances, the handling characteristics. It, it feels like I would expect, to be honest. If you told me it's, it's a fairly long bladed broadsword of 1.35 kilos, this is what I'd expect. It's, it's basically, it's medium handling. It doesn't feel like a dog, but it isn't as super fast light as those one kilo broad, um, basket hilts, back swords or broadswords that are very, very quick. It is that medium weight, which I really quite like for representing a true broadsword. Because, as I said, uh, there is a big difference between the very light, sort of around about one kilo fast basket hilts and a, and, a, and a large broadsword that, of course, the Scots and the Highlanders especially were so famous for using. And I think what they've done here is pull off one that handles like that without hitting with too much force. Because I don't think this is going to hit, to be honest, a lot harder than, let's say, a... Um, a Cavitan Eastern Sabre. So I use the straight version of that all the time. In fact, um, that is what is currently fitted on my um, armor class here. That is a Cavitan Eastern straight sabre blade, if, if straight sabre is a thing, which in British English it isn't, but we'll use that for now. So I think you'll find in terms of hitting power, it's going to be quite similar to that. It looks really nice. In fact, I think it's one of the best steel products that Black Fens has ever made. And despite the fact that I think I would give them feedback to give a few little tweaks, I think they're really modest because the grip does feel nice. The, the, the length and the, the balance and the weight are all about in the parameters I would expect. And so really all that remains to be seen is what it's like to actually spar with. And that's gonna be, that's gonna tell us more about the handling in the fight, how the edge damage goes and things like that. But 
personally, I think, for representing the, 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 the kind of full traditional 18th and early 19th century Highland broadsword, it is exactly what I had in mind. And um, with just those few little caveats on tweaks, I think could be given to improve this. Uh, and one last thing is on basket hilts, the, um, some basket hilts join all the bars together here. And you can see this one has a washer. It doesn't actually go all the way around, although it doesn't need to. But all the branches all connect together into this washer section here. And that is fantastic for structural integrity. So um, with my um, armor class, for example, this does the same where all the branches join together and it's really strong. And yet my other basket hilt, which uh, I can't remember which one is, I think it's the diamond um, hilt from armor class, doesn't join there. It's just the branches all touch to the pommel. And as a result, it bends and buckles um, quite badly. So in terms of structural integrity, that is really excellent. So yeah, basket hilts, it's kind of funny. You think of basket hilts providing loads of, lo loads of protection to the hand and they do. But to get them within a realistic weight range, they often are quite weak. So even if you look at most antique originals, the front loops are strong enough to last, you know, uh, maybe a battle or two battles, three battles, depending on how hard and how many hits you're, you're taking on them. With our training swords, we expect them to last, you know, a year, two years of heavy sparring use. And so our baskets for, for sparring purposes do need to be tougher than a lot of the actual antique originals. And, and that's not unique to basket hilts. The same goes, for example, for like the brass hilts, padroons and sabers of the, of the late 18th century that we practice with all the time. We do need them to be just a bit tougher because we need them to last more than a battle, two battles, three battles equivalent. We need a year, two years, heavy sparring every week kind of use. So my first impressions are they, they got the specification really close to what I had in mind. I think it looks really quite beautiful. I think there's a, a very few minor tweaks that could just slightly improve the look and the, and and bring the weight down to what you know what was the original target. Although it's still within a completely historical range, I think it's going to be a ton of fun to use. And I will follow it up with a video once we've had you know a few weeks, months, or whatever of usage, and I can talk more about it. So I do hope you enjoyed the video. Um, this product, of course, will be available very soon from Black Fencer. In fact, if you message them now, you could probably order it already. Although, of course, I am going to give them just a few recommendations just to tweak a few little details. And, of course, if you wanted to put different blades on it, like a saber blade, for example, I know they'll do that. So Black Fencer are very much, um, sometimes they, they, they be considered custom and sometimes semi-custom. And um, certainly when it comes to mixing and matching blades and hilt types of existing models they're really happy to do it so if you want a turkey which is a basket hilt with a saber blade they will make it for you with the the infantry or the cavalry i'd recommend the infantry but it could go either way so yeah if you fancy a turkey you could also order that from them as well and i think that's um, really quite exciting i also with this order got in the synthetic regimental so it's this hilt synthetic uh, regimental broadsword so I will review that and the new katanas that they've just released. We've actually got two of their katanas and we did briefly get to spar with them at the last session. So I can already give some really good insight into that in the next video. Thanks for watching and please do subscribe if you haven't already.